um, for a long time, and I think I still do, I confused bliss, feelings of bliss or, or relaxation with this space inside. And yes. um, when I'm agitated, or it's much harder to, to feel uh, the awareness or to enjoy or sink back into it or go... I suppose my question is... Um, Mm. I don't know what my question is. It's just yes. observation. Really. I'm picking up a little bit what you're, what you're, where you're going to with this, and <clears throat> it is good that you. Um, I'm hearing quite often people saying this thing that uh, uh, I've experienced bliss, also great sense of uh, relaxation and joy. Some also that something comes in mind and it seems to actualize very quickly. It, all these different things happen. No? And there is also sometimes a longing that that would just perpetuate and just continue because something would just like it to be that way. But inevitably it changes also. And <coughs> it's replaced sometimes by feelings of huge contrast can happen. So, we are not to reject the bliss or to reject that pleasure or that space or the sense of relaxation <coughs> or that joy or the feeling of lightness. Not to reject it. Simply don't label it, okay, that's, that's it. Obviously, it cannot uh, be it. Uh, and I can understand why it is taken to be it, because for much of our life we are striving to reach a state where we are just happy. And it seems as though, um, for most, in most spiritual books, also teachings, happiness comes up all the time, that one needs to be happy. And I'm also in agreement that your natural nature, your natural state is to be happy. Not happy about, just happy. And at peace. Uh, not at peace with all things, just at peace. And but within that, within that, there is space for all expressions to to come, to to express themselves. All emotions can express itself. Then eventually it will exhaust its expression, and then subside into quietude by itself, uh, unaided. You don't have to try and move things around you simply notice that actually it seems to be so. And it is when you have arrived, you may say, at that pace or that state where you simply don't mind what shows up. Everything is allowed space to express, to stretch, to yawn, to burp, to happen without that inner traffic policeman you know, sending things this way or that way then there seem to remain behind a sort of state of equanimity and peace, which is not depending on circumstances. It's simply there. And I call this peace, this joy, the, the perfume that arises out of this emptiness itself. This flower has no shape. So um, this quality of not minding a quality of sameness in all in all situations, all circumstances, you see. It is not that the consciousness become bland. It's not that, in fact. Sometimes intense joy happens and that is enjoyed. Sometimes unexplained feelings of sadness come also. But they are given room, they are allowed room to express themselves, you see. Because the interpreting tendency is held in abeyance somehow simply because that identity that feels, oh yes, I like this and I don't, and why, why, and who, and me, and if, and but, and only, and when, and should, and could, and all of that stuff, all that noise, has nothing to hang on to, you see. And that beautiful state where you're free from I, me, identity, when the I, as I said before, it is an I sense that arises from time. It comes from past. It has a history. 
it has uh, a sort of psychological force. And that I, I called I, which is synonymous with mind. There's always a story. It's always on the way to somewhere. There's also an I, which I call the natural intuition, the I intuition, which arises out of emptiness. It is that I-ness uh, that observing happens in. It is the observer, the witness, you might call, of all that appears to happen. Initially, when we are not accustomed to it, when I'm saying not accustomed to it, not accustomed to recognizing that it is already so, initially, the witnessing or the observing, I call it more active, meaning that there's a consciousness that I'm observing and not identifying. But as something relaxes and sees that there isn't actually a personal observer of such, there is just a quality of observing, then the observing itself moves into what I call a sort of passive observing. It's recognized that it's just happening. There's no one particularly observing. But that is also observed, you see. Mm. And don't go heady with it. Somehow it's an intuitive recognition. And there's a silence in that recognition. 